Hey everybody, this is Michael Ralph and we are doing some green pepper population models. That's a mouthful. So let's start from Go. First off, we need to open up a Microsoft Excel file. And if we're going to start from scratch, the first thing we need to do is set up our X and Y axes. On the X, we're going to have our generation. And on the Y, we'll have our population size. Let's make those columns a little bigger. Now first off, let's start from generation zero. And to write a simple formula, each generation is going to be the previous generation, plus one. And we can copy and paste that all the way down. And let's start with ten. For population size, let's start with one. That's just an arbitrary choice. And off to the side, we're going to need some area to keep all of our variables. Now first off, when you have them dissecting green peppers, they're going to be deciding how many seeds there are, on average, per fruit. It might be handy to even off to the side, let each group report their findings. So we'll have group 1, group 2, group 3. You could have however many groups, and I would let them give, them, give their groups a fun name, but for simplicity's sake. And you're also going to need to define how many fruit there are per plant. I find it's easiest to just decide that however many fruit you have in the classroom is however many fruit there are on a plant. But you could also show them a picture of a pepper plant and let them guess how many fruit there actually are. That will certainly make the populations increase significantly faster, but that's a decision that you can make. So first off, let's write ourselves a formula. This is going to be an average of each group's finding. So hold control and click where each group's finding will be posted and hit enter. Now as the kids report their numbers, let's say 185, 335, and 297, it'll keep calculating that average for us. And then we're going to do this by saying that the class makes up one whole plant, which gives us three fruit per plant which is a considerable underestimate. Green pepper plants have a lot of fruit. Now we have everything we need to write ourselves a formula. So let's do an equals. And we're going to say every single parent is going to survive to the next generation, plus each parent is going to produce times four fruits. Remember to lock every single variable as it gets referenced over here in this column by pressing F4. You'll see those dollar signs come up if you've done it right. Times however many seeds there are per fruit and lock it up. Gives us our new population size and we can copy and paste that all the way down. You'll see those numbers get substantially bigger pretty quickly. Okay, our next step is to get ourselves a simple graph. So we select our population column, only our population column. Don't click the B. Make sure you start right on top of population and drag it down. Go to insert. I like a line graph, but a scatter graph could work equally well. And there's a good start. Now, so that the kids understand what they're looking at, I usually like to have them do all of their labels. So let's change this population to green pepper population. And under layouts, we've got all of the fun dressings of a graph. Under axis titles, we can put a couple of axis titles. So along the X, we've got generation. And along the Y, our population size. Now if you're running multiple populations you probably need a legend but since we're not we'll get rid of that and give ourselves some more room to look at graph. Now this shape's a little unfamiliar but that's because the numbers get so large so quickly that all of our smaller generations have negligible size compared to this 2 times 10 to the 28. Now through a pretty simple discussion I think that the kids will realize that you don't see in 10 generations 6 times 10 to the 28th number of pepper plants out in the real world. And with a little bit of prompting, they'll come up with the notion that not every seed is successful. 
So we want to express what percentage of our seeds are successful in getting all the way to new and reproducing plants. And you want to express that as a simple decimal. So let's start with 50%. To incorporate this into our formula, click on the first cell where we find a formula, and we're going to just simply add this on, and by add I mean multiply. Our progeny term, that's everything except for our initial population, our progeny term by the success rate. And since it's in a variable column, lock it up. And copy and paste that all the way down. Now you see our numbers have changed. We're down to 26 instead of 28, but those are still outrageously large numbers. So let's try 20%. Still pretty big. 10%. How about 2%? Oops. Still very large. Eventually the kids will get to the fact that they got to go below 1%. Let's try one half percent. Point two percent. Point one percent. That's a little more reasonable. But still, the next concept is if we let this population go long enough, it's still going to get up to the astronomical numbers. And we don't see billions and trillions of green pepper plants in any location. And that's because the next thing the kids will get to eventually you're just going to run out of room. You can only hold so many green pepper plants. Now choosing a number out of convenience we will say our island only holds 300. Adding this term to our model is a little more complicated. We want to multiply and you'll need to open a parenthesis. Now, since we need this term to get smaller as our population gets bigger, we need to do a 1 minus. We're going to do our previous population size divided by our maximum population size. And since this guy's over here, lock it up. Close parenthesis, enter. Now you'll notice that our first term didn't change much, but when you copy and paste it down, our larger terms are changing more. Still, select our graph and let's run it out a few more generations. Out of the way. You. And there's our familiar S shape. Now, time permitting, or maybe it's an honors class, We've got our K for carrying capacity, but where's our growth rate? The growth rate, or the familiar R for our K and R strategists, is simply the combined influence of all of our other progeny terms. And we're at 0.817 right now. The closer this is to 1, the closer the population is to a stable, clean S-curve. So let's increase this guy to something more. You'll see we're up at 4, and this population is way unstable. Let's bring it down 1.5, closer to the S-curve with a little bit of oscillation over and above the carrying capacity. Whereas if we go lower, it's a much more gradual increase. From here you can let the kids play around with their model however they like and look at different influences for different different variables. You can even manipulate your equation so that you pack all of these terms into one clean growth rate. So they can see the effect of different growth rates without having to ma manipulate individual variables. I forgot to lock it. This is especially fun to do multiple graphs, multiple populations on the same graph. 
or add even more variables in. But from here, I think you've got the handle. Enjoy.